When you see the term fresh autumn used in bird ID books to describe the colours of some male birds after their autumn molt, the colours are far less vibrant than you would expect to see from new feathers. The bright colours are actually there already, but hidden from view by the dull fringes on the overlapping feathers. The Bramling, a winter visitor to the UK, is a good example of this. When it arrives here in the autumn, the male's head and back have a mottled brownish appearance. Yet by the time it leaves us in late winter, its head and back have been transformed into a striking solid black colour. They achieve this by what is termed abrasion, whereby the ends of the feathers are slowly over time worn away by the action of flying, exposing the bright coloured feathers underneath. If you've got house spells in your garden, you can see this happening, because after the autumn moth, the black bib on the male is almost obscured by the dull fringes on its feathers. Gradually over the winter, due to wear and tear, the end of the feathers are worn away, giving the bib a mottled appearance, which will have slowly disappeared by the spring. This clever adaptation means that it can go through the winter period with more subdued plumage, making them less visually obvious to a predator, and yet by the breeding season they will have again acquired their vibrant appearance, which they will need to attract a female, and all without having to go through the arduous task of moulting again. As can be seen from this male displaying, the colour and size of the bib is very important. The larger the bib, the more dominant the bird, and this one's certainly top dog in my garden. The reed bunting is another bird that uses this technique, and by spring, changes its dull mottled head for a striking black and white appearance. One of the benefits of adopting this procedure could be that for the autumn and winter period, the more subdued colours make them far less obvious to predators, and yet still attain their breeding colours by the spring, without having to go through the arduous procedure of a second moult. The starling is another bird that uses this abrasion technique to tone down its colours after its autumn moult, and yet effortlessly regain them again by the following spring. The one on the left, only halfway through its moult, is a first winter bird, and as you can see, it's still got its juvenile colouring on its head. Not only do they require white tips to the head and body feathers, they also have black bills and brown legs all of which combine to give a duller appearance and make them less vulnerable to predators during the winter. By late winter, the yellow colouring of the bill is returning and the legs are now pink. The white tips of the feathers steadily wear away and by the spring, the head and breast will have regained its luminous black appearance with a mauve and green sheen that glistens in the sunlight. This first winter young bird will keep its grey-brown colouring until it gets its first adult plumage after the autumn moult. I sometimes think it would be great if we and our clothes could get to look better from wear and tear with the passage of time. Oh well, I suppose this is just another thing that we're not as clever at as birds.